All right, I'm joined by Dave now from Primetime Carolina. You can obviously follow them on Twitter at Primetime Car, C A R. Thanks for joining us. Two dads here. It was supposed to be at a certain time. I moved it a little bit earlier because my kid went to bed sooner. I gassed him out today. It was my day off. And so we went to two grocery stores, did the whole Costco thing, did a walk, and he passed out. How are your kids doing? My kids are doing well. And it's amazing how much a trip to the grocery store feels like an event for a child. You can take them to the grocery oh, store. You can take them to Disney World. Either way, they're going to have a great time. That's what I've noticed as, as a father of two young boys. Brian Burns situation. On your on your scale of 1 to 10, 10 being you might crap your pants, <laughs> how, how are you feeling about this? Uh, well, I can never promise that I won't crap my pants at any moment. But I think in this right. situation, I'm creeping up towards about a – Six. I wasn't too worried, but I think as the see, or as the weeks getting later and later, you know, you you really you start to look at the calendar and you realize we're not that far away from game day. So it's kind of something that's been on the back burner, you know, no pun intended. That you know, we you thought we'd take care of it at some point, it just haven't taken care of it yet. So getting a little worried. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I'm. I'm only worried by the figure, the amount, and. I love Brian Burns. I think he's been a class act, like unlike Nick Bosa, who sat out preseason training camp. Like Brian Burns has been participating. He is an active participant on this team. He's he's obviously a leader. Uh, he, he is the face of the franchise right now. Probably Bryce Young is that guy now going forward. But uh, and I think he's I think he's produced a lot. You know, it makes sense that you know teams have offered him offered the Carolina Panthers two first and a second for his services. They turned that down. So. You know that they value him, but when you take a look at, like, from what I read in Joe Purse's article on The Athletic, he wants Nick Bosa money, which is about, like, $30 million a year. They, apparently, they're telling Joe Purse, they're, they're thinking more like $23 million a year, which is more, and I, I literally just looked this up now, $23 million a year is more than what T.J. Watt is making. And statistically, in the last three to five years, T.J. Watt has been more productive in terms of just getting numbers. And so that's where I'm a little bit worried right now. And apparently TJ Watt was a new contract. So um, that's, that's the only thing I'm worried. I'm thinking about, about how are they going to, how are they going to make the numbers work? Yeah. And I think for, so that everybody. Can. Yeah. And I think we're, we've reached this point where, and you see it a lot when it comes to negotiations, you get a player who knows they're young and have a ton of potential and they want to get paid off of that potential, especially when, the market's about to be reset with a Bosa type of deal. And then you look at from the team side and they're like, dude, you've only got double digit sacks. What once in your career. So we're going to pay you off Mm -hmm. of production. So you got the player wants to be paid off of what he could possibly do. And the team wants to pay him off of what he's already done. And I think that's the stalemate they're Mm -hmm. probably at right here. Yeah. Like, uh, like I, I have never really dealt. First of all, I didn't know TJ Watt was this, productive i did not know that like me that that's my bad that i don't that i don't know those things but i didn't realize how good this guy is in such a short amount of time just like uh like in the last mm -hmm, in the last three years like this guy's played 40 games in the last three years brian burns has played 48 he's got yeah like 52 tackles burns has got 38 he's got 43 sacks burns has 30 like it's just it's crazy i i did not know that and obviously he's asking for more money i didn't realize how little money brian burns was making if you just take a look online guys making like the country's like it's still his rookie deal right. basically and tj wasman i think this year he he cracks the 20 million dollars so i guess the steelers franchise which we know is, is the model franchise out there uh, that's what david tepper wants out of the panthers but they got on it quickly whereas Brian Burns they seem to be stretching and stretching and I, and I think eventually they will have to pay him because they're not they had a chance to let him go and they're not gonna let him go yeah and I so, mean at this point they're all in like no matter what it's gonna right. cost they're gonna have to pay it because they were offered two first round picks and they said no thank you so if you're gonna walk away mm-hmm. from that trade a year later you can't not re-sign the guy so all the leverage is in, uh, in favor of Brian Burns right now and, you know, everybody knows yeah. it. So do you think he – oh, yeah. And you can't let him – like, what are you going to do? Like, he's 
you got your Bryce Young on the offensive side. He's he's your franchise there. He's like your new Cam Newton. And then on the defensive side, you got your your face of the defense. You know, he's your Luke Keekley. He's your Thomas Davis, and that's Brian Burns. You can't lose him now and then go searching for your next face of the defense like we've been searching for the, the, the face of the offense for years because – like I think that that's a quarterback's best friend is a great defense. Like we just take a look at the 2015 Panthers, the amount of short fields Cam and the and the gang got because of Luke and Thomas and everybody. You can't, you can't, you can't mess with that fire. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely, and, uh, absolutely, yeah, you're right. And it, it gets more complicated when you start thinking about the contracts coming up behind it. You got Derek Brown, uh, you got Jeremy yeah. Chin, you got J.C. Horn. Mm. suddenly there's a lot of mouths to feed, you know, so I understand why it's complicated and you want to keep this defense intact as much as you possibly can, especially like you said, now that you finally have your franchise quarterback, you want to put him in good positions and give him opportunities to succeed. If you're going to do that, you need a good defense. So, you know, it's tough. I understand why, you know, I understand the argument from both sides. I really do. Uh, I understand why Brian Burns wants what he wants. I understand why the team doesn't want to pay him quite that. Um, but, you know, if we're going to sit around and wait for Nick Bosa, you know, who knows how long we could be waiting. Nick Bosa could be a free agent, and, and literally he'll have a blank check. He can get anything he wants across the league. Um, you know, yep. I just saw something that said one GM said he would have like 28 or 29 suitors willing to pay him $30 million plus. So, you know, we can't yep. sit around and wait for Nick Bosa. If we need to give a little more than we want to to get Brian Burns in the building, you know, that's just kind of what we have to do at this point. How are you feeling now compared to how you did before the preseason started? Because it feels like the narrative around the Panthers has, has shifted a little bit. I wouldn't say I'm any less optimistic. Um, I understand why there are other fans who kind of have that knee-jerk reaction that see what we did in the preseason and feel like we're not living up to expectations. And, I mean, that's true, but I think it's also a lot more by design than some people realize. And, you know, I don't – you know, Frank Reich's been very coy about it when he talks about what they were doing in the preseason. And I understand all that. And, that you know, I don't know how much it really matters that they're not trying to show their playbook in the preseason. But he's mm-hmm. adamant that they don't want to show anything. And that's was their only goal, basically, in the preseason. But I'm I'm still very optimistic yeah. about the season. I feel pretty good about the offense. You know, obviously, we could go on and on about all the changes there. It sucks to see DJ Moore go. Uh, But I do like some of the guys we brought in. You know, obviously we don't have stars um, on the outside, but I feel like we have guys who can do enough that with a guy like Bryce Young, who's always getting compared to a a point guard with his play style, a guy who's going to, you know, make the right plays and dink and dunk his way down the field. I think you have guys that you can work with. And I think for as much change for the Panthers this off season, The best thing for them is to try to keep things as similar as they can to the way they ended the season last year. And by that, I mean committing to the run game, running between the tackles, leaning on the offensive line. Uh, Their run blocking ability is certainly their strength. And then using Bryce Young's playmaking ability and decision making ability uh, in the play action game um, off of the running attack. So Mm -hmm. I think if they can kind of play a little more conservative on offense, rely on their defense a little bit, trust Bryce Young to make good decisions. It'll put them in the best possible position to win some games, especially early on in the season while they're still trying to figure everything out. Like I think it's almost like they have this Ferrari and And you and I, and maybe some other people, they want to go. They want to go on the auto and they want to go. Like, I'm just like, Oh my God. Just like, can you just use the signal and like be a bit smart, drive the speed limit, maybe a little bit lower, but I feel like they're just going to go and, and I think that is where uh, that is where I think um, the concerns lie about his frame and him getting exposed a little bit, just getting smacked around. Uh, like the first couple of games against division foes who know this team before Bryce showed up, and you know them to get a lick on him. And and like I mentioned, like this is a division up for the taking. Like I've seen, I haven't seen one really consensus uh, prediction yet from anybody saying, "Oh, it's one hundred percent the Saints division." It's the Falcons. No one's saying Tampa, obviously. They are, I think someone termed it, they are soft uh, tanking yeah. right now. Like, they have quarterbacks out there, but they're not, they're just kind of there. They're placeholders. But, like, I've seen a couple Carolina winning the division. But, yeah, I think, yeah, I think you and I are on the same page in the fact that, yeah, I'm a little worried they might get a little too, a little too hot mm-hmm. and heavy on Bryce, thinking, oh, he can handle it. He's, he's a genius. Go. 
and uh, he's not built like Cam. And so I understand what the concerns like there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's still a rookie, guys. You know, I know it doesn't feel like it a lot of the yeah. times, but let's bring him on a little slower. Um, let him rely on his teammates, which I, you know, I think the coaching staff smart enough to know that. But I, and I also just hope the fans are willing to give him a little bit of leniency in the beginning because I think we're looking at him already like he's Drew Brees instead of looking at him like right. he could be Drew Brees. And uh, I think right. we need to make sure we lower our expectations just a little bit early on. But I do think he can certainly play well enough to win. I just don't think we need to put right. all of our eggs in the Bryce Young basket week one and say, go win us the football game. So with that, do you, do you think he could win offensive rookie of the year? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think so, too. I, I think it's. It's a him, Anthony Richardson, Bijan Robinson. I think th- those yeah, three. Those are the three names and, I would probably say too. Probably could pick out yeah, a wide receiver throw. I think Zay Flowers is going to have a chance to be yeah, a, a good yeah. player early on. Yeah, I uh, I wanted to draft him in fantasy yesterday, and I was on. Uh, I don't know how I got into auto draft, and I was like, "What the hell is going on?" I was I was watching Bear with my wife, and I was like, I tried to like show that I'm paying attention. I was like, delete. <laughs> Take this auto draft off, and then it, it drafted some. It drafted like Geno Smith or something for me. Like, yeah. Fuck. But, uh, um, yeah, I think just like straight stats. I think a Bijan could come out of the gate and like just just have stats galore. And uh, I feel like we're just gonna have some big flashy Cam Newton type yeah. plays. We're like, wow, and voters will remember that kind of stuff. But I think Bryce could have more the most success. I think, um, and I, I feel like he's an option for sure. I think that's what scares me the most about Atlanta is not just being John Robinson, but I feel like they're going to be so well built to basically do exactly yeah. what I just said we should do with Bryce Young is, and run the ball. And, you know, how much can you trust Desmond Ritter? I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. But that's really going to be the difference in their season because I think if he plays very well this season, they have a very, very good shot to win the division because uh, they're built to run the ball yeah. and play good enough mm-hmm. defense for sure. Yeah, I keep calling him Calvin Ridley. I just remember now his his name is Desmond River. I keep re- he's just got such a forgettable hey, face. Uh, he's just I'm just like oh Calvin Ridley the quarterback. Oh yeah, no Desmond. Yeah, no. But uh, right. So what what is your as a what's your definition of a successful season? Like what what are you hoping for? You know, I think if we get to eight wins, that's probably more than enough. Uh, but yeah. You know, dude, I'm. I want to see us in the playoffs. So, I, I'm. I have lofty expectations, or maybe not expectations, but hopes uh, for the season. So, I would like to see us get to to ten, but who knows if we can get yeah. there? This the schedule's not brutal. Um, if you right. look at the quarterbacks we face, nothing terrible other than maybe Trevor Lawrence is probably the you know by far the toughest one. Yeah, a lot of. Like yeah, AFC South. We got we got CJ Stroud. We got Anthony Richardson. We got uh, I don't even is it Malik Willis or is it is it Ryan Tannehill? Like who who's the quarterback in in, in Tennessee? I'm, I'm not. Do we know yet? Is it is it Tannehill? It's Tannehill? I guess yeah. Yeah, like it's him. Like I don't think Will Levis has played much, and so yeah, I think uh, I think we play Green Bay. Yeah. I think, and then we go to Chicago. I've heard some very like those weird- weirdly great things about Jordan Love. So I'm interested to see if like. Yeah. He's kind of under the radar right now, but I, I, I personally don't watch yeah, him enough to right have here, an opinion. Right? Sorry, what? Yeah, I just I, I could say like, he, well, he's not he's he's sat behind Aaron Rodgers longer than Aaron Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre. But maybe he's just been cooking in the slow cooker forever. He's just ready to go. Yeah, you know. But uh, yeah, see, I think eight wins to me that would be not a failure, but it's like, wait, you guys they got the seven last year, right? With like two head coaches, and, yeah, no real quarterback. Like to me, I think. I think Bryce Young, in my head, I'm like, yeah, he's better than Sam Darnold. I, he has to be. Like, his brain at least <laughs> right, is better than right. Sam Darnold. But Sam Darnold's been in the league for a long time, and so I feel like that's somewhat disrespectful. But on the surface, I think Bryce has a maybe a higher floor than Sam did at, at coming out of college. And, you know, I think they have some consistency, consistency in their head coaches, at least in the offseason. They have a – it seems like they're being run like a professional team compared to the Matt Rule era. Um I feel like eight wins. I'd, feel, I'd be I'd be kind of bummed out. I'm like, wow, you guys just beat Matt Rule and his intern by just that's, one. And so that's the point I I kind of make to people. I actually got in this conversation, you know, a couple weeks ago with uh with a Commanders fan, 
And and someone asked oh, me yeah. that exact question, you know, how many wins do you think you guys get this year? And I said, man, I, I think we can get at least nine or ten. And the and the Commanders fan just yep. started laughing and said, you crazy? I said, I, I mean, I don't think I am. We won seven last year with Sam Darnold and half Matt Rule, half Steve Wilkes. So I don't see why, <laughs> we, why we couldn't do it now. And, uh, yeah, you know. I, I think so too, and I think with a and a potentially better wide receiver core with some, you know, say what you want about him, but like Adam Thielen, still, you know, he can still move the chains. He's that reliable veteran. I think Hayden Hurst is actually really good. Like he, yeah. when I was betting on sports, that guy's always got me some points. Yeah. And uh, and so, well, you guys, you guys, can't, do you guys have single game betting in uh, North Carolina? Did you guys uh, just pass it? We just that? passed it. It's not, it doesn't come into effect until sometime like next year. I don't think we'll have it this football season. Okay. That's yeah. okay. That's we just right. have like the, uh, the FanDuel bet- uh, player props right now. Okay. So we can still throw our lives away if we want to. So. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. I have a different job now, so I have no. I don't have as much time to just sit on my phone like, hmm, and just like <laughs> think about lines. But, yeah. but uh, yeah, I think like I was super – like fanned out when I saw the schedule and uh, I thought the Panthers get a good amount of money. <laughs> like, I don't think, like, I think Detroit will be a tough team. They play Detroit. Like, I, I don't think Chicago will be that tough, even though it's in Chicago. Dude. Like, Green Bay Dude. Dude. Sorry tough. to interrupt you, but we cannot lose to Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> no, they, they annoy Dude. me. They're so weird. Dude. They're so they, weird. They have been on us, man. They have been on us this off season. And that's the other reason why, like, it, it, it perturbs me when I'm seeing now national media saying, you know, the Panthers are going to be, you know, I picked them at under seven and a half yeah. wins. You know, they're, they're selling us low. Now I'm like, whoa, like, we cannot let that happen. No, we can't let Chicago get Marvin and, Harrison Jr. or whoever. The thing that's, dude, how, how much would that suck if they got Marvin Harrison Jr. after we traded on DJ Moore? But, uh, oh, that'd be awful. Every time you talk to a Bears fan, fan, like, I went to the draft and, uh, Every Bears, every Bears fan I saw there, they were like, "Dude, you guys got fleeced. We took everything from you. We took all. It's like you guys basically took like two draft picks and a wide receiver." Yeah, a wide receiver who, if you asked most people, DJ Moore top ten or top, you know, number one wide receiver in the NFL, I don't think they would didn't do get that. Any, I don't. And don't I, I love DJ Moore. I don't want to sound like a hater, but like he yeah, was not no. getting, yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude, I got uh, an autographed football down here somewhere, or a helmet. But, uh, right. Yeah, until not get any kind of love like that as like a top fifteen or no. maybe even twenty receiver. And no. like I said, I love the guy. He's definitely getting a little overrated right now. Like he's good. He's definitely a very good receiver, but he's not like prime mm-hmm. Randy Moss. He's not gonna like step on your on no. the field and like change your team. And that's how. No. A lot of people seem to act about him here lately. Yeah, unless they can use him different. Like, he's definitely an NFC North type wide receiver, you know, hard nose, yeah, you know, kind of like a Steve Smith type. Yeah, like I could, you know, I could see him totally, you know, breaking tackles at Lambeau. And, and that like is certainly the, like, December. if there's an area where he's special, that's it, running after the catch. For that's sure. It. Yeah. Absolutely. So, and he has, he has yeah, great he's hands. A running back when he gets him. The issue yeah. is, he doesn't create great separation. And that makes it difficult to get him right. the ball. And that's when he's at his best is when the mm-hmm. ball's in his hands. Honestly, he'd probably be a, a more effective player if he was like a um, like a running back or like a hybrid yeah. player like Cordell Patterson or something. But he's good enough right. as oh, a yeah. I remember in the draft they said he's a running back with his hand. With the, when he, once he catches the ball, he transitions to yeah. running back. Like I remember that. Yeah, in the draft. that's, like, that, that's, what, that's what they said. And that's very, very accurate. But um, – and, you know, it's not like he doesn't get enough balls. But I don't know. It, it just always felt like – he would, and it wasn't always his fault because we had bad quarterbacks. But it felt like he would disappear right. for games, and it was like really frustrating. Yeah, because he was such a good player that it was like, why can't we get this guy involved? And he'd finish the game, you know, mm-hmm. three receptions for thirty-five yards, or whatever, and we'd lose. And yeah. I appreciate you. I appreciate the hustle. Get back into it. I know it's hard. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I know it's hard. Like once a week when the offseason is tough, especially when there's nothing to do. But like, yeah. You'll, I think everyone will have enough content to talk about uh, once the season starts. Yeah, I'm sure. Every loss, I'm sure no one will panic at all. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone's totally level-headed. Yeah. All right. Dave, I appreciate you. Say hi to the all fam. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thank you.